Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Keith Gebhardt with Learn Tech Training and in this video we're going to discuss how to configure Telnet and SSH on our Cisco switches or routers. Now after we configure Telnet and SSH we will also use a tool called Wireshark to look at why it is Telnet is not secure and why we no longer use it. So since I have a router here that has no configurations on it I have to console into it. So I'm going to use my terminal uh, emulator here which is PuTTY and I know I'm connected to COM4 so I'm going to use COM4 and connect to my router. Now I'm going to go ahead and get into the configuration mode by enable config T to go into global configuration mode. And I'm going to give my router a host name of just router one, nothing fancy. I'm going to go into the line console zero so I could give it a console password of just something simple again, Cisco login. And then I'm going to exit that now to configure telnet and SSH, you need to first go into line VTY 0215, and I'm going to give it a password of Cisco again. And then I need to tell it to log in. Now, you do not need to tell VTY or for Telnet or SSH to log in here. It already knows it needs a password to do anything. So you adding this command here is essentially just for redundancy. It just If you're new to configuring devices, it's good to get into practice because configuring your line console zero to your line VTYs are almost the same. It's just good for practice. So I'm just going to do login. I'm going to exit this. And I'm also going to do a enable password Cisco, okay? So all my passwords are going to be Cisco. Now, the next thing I need to do is give the interface an IP address so I could actually remote into this router, right? So I'm going to do interface FA0 slash 0, since that is the interface I am plugged into. And I'm simply going to do IP address 192.168.10.1 and a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. And I'm going to simply tell it not to be shut down. So I have to negate that shutdown command. Remember, on routers, all ports by default are shut down, so you negate it. You tell it not to be shut down. So no shutdown is the command. Now I can go ahead and exit this. I'm going to do a do WR just to save it real quick. And it's building my configuration. And if I open up my command line interface here, I can go ahead and ping my default gateway just to make sure that I have access. 192.168.10.1 is the default gateway. It's going to do a general failure or timeout, but then it will come through. Okay, It needs to build its ARP table. So once that goes through, I know I have connection to it. Now I'm just going to go ahead and open up Wireshark and I'm going to click the options icon here so you can take a look at the different adapters you have on your computer. I know I'm on my Ethernet adapter and I can verify that by using the drop down menu and see my statically configured IP address on my computer. And I'm just going to click this and I'm going to go ahead and click start. Now once that starts you're going to get some spanning tree information here populate but we're not worried about that. We're going to open up our CLI again and we're going to turn that back into my router 192.168.10.1. And here I'm just going to type in my VTY password, and then I need to type in my enable password. So I'm going to type in Cisco once again. So here we could go back to Wireshark, since I'm already logged into the router, and I'm going to stop this capture. And I'm just going to go to the TCP segment here, and I'm going to do follow TCP stream. And look at this, okay? Here's my VTY, pa VTY password, and here's my enable password. But some of you are probably saying to you, well, isn't there an encrypted version of the enable password we could use? Absolutely. Let's go take a look at that. So here I could go ahead and go back into global configuration mode, conf T, and I'm going to do no enable password. And I'm going to do instead an enable secret Cisco. Actually, let's do remote, okay, just to change it up. So enable secret remote this time. Do right, just so it saves it. And now I'm going to go ahead and go back. I'm just going to move that out of the way. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to build a new capture. Continue without saving. And let me go ahead and exit this. Exit, exit, and let's log back in, okay? So let's go ahead and start this. Telnet. 192.168.10.1. Cisco is my VTY password. Remember, then my enable password now is remote. So now that I'm back into my router, let me go to the, let me clear out this here. Let me scroll down to where my telnet session is, follow TCP stream, and look at this. Now I know this is definitely this session because my last session is over here. Remember the last session I only typed an EN to get into privilege mode. This time I did enable and my password's different. So here you can see that even though we encrypted that password, it's still going through as plain text. People could eavesdrop on this, this packet being transmitted across our network and easily determine what the password is. That's why we do not use TC or I'm sorry, this is why we do not use Telnet anymore on our networks because it is a huge security issue. So let's go ahead and take a look at configuring SSH and see the difference between these. I'm just going to pull this aside and wait for, and hold on to it till later so we can compare the SSH and Telnet together. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this from capturing. 
and let's go back into our router. So here I am in, in my router and I'm going to just go ahead and do conf t and we need to give it a domain name. So I'm going to do IP domain name learntech.com. That is not my website. I'm just using it right now. This is all fictional. Okay. And then I need to tell it to what? Well, we need to give it a crypto key. Okay. So crypto key generate RSA and I'm just going to do um, yeah, I'm going to replace it. You probably don't have them yet, but I'm just going to replace it and I'm going to do 1024 keys and there it is. It is generating. Now, once that generates, now I can do IP SSH version 2. We like to use the newer, latest, greatest. And now I need to also do line VTY 0 through 15 and I'm going to do a login local. Okay. This will require me to have a username and password. Now that I did that, I'm also going to do transport input SSH. Now, if I do all, if I hit question mark here, you can see we could use all. We could use a bunch of different protocols that we're not going to even concern ourselves with. But we could use SSH or just Telnet. Well, since I'm already Telneted in, I'm just going to do all. That way I don't have to get worry, worry about getting kicked out. And now I could exit this. Now I'm going to do no username password. And I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do a username admin password. Actually, I'm going to do secret Cisco. That way it is what? It is encrypted, not only on my um, configuration file, but going through the network too, because again, we are using SSH. Okay. So I'm just going to do write that. So it saves it and I could go ahead and open up my terminal emulator program. I'm going to close out that connection because I don't need it. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to just type, I'm just going to select SSH here and the address 192.168.10.1 and hit enter. And yes, I accept the key login as the username, which is admin. And now it's asking me for the password, which again is Cisco. Now, if I type in enable, it's going to what? Ask me for that enable password again, which is remote. And I am now SSH into my router. So let's go ahead and close that out. I want to go ahead and go back to my packet sniffer. I'm going to go ahead and close this so we could start a new one, continue without saving. And I'm going to close out this. I'm going to start a new uh, Wireshark capture. So once that starts capturing, we could go ahead and open up our SSH application here, which is putty. And I'm just going to type in the IP address that I'm accessing, 192.168.10.1 and hit open. Now look, it's asking me to log in as what? Again, that's my username and my password is Cisco. And then enable password is gonna be remote. Remember we changed that. So now if I go back to Wireshark and stop this capture and I scroll down to SSH, I'm just gonna right click, follow TCP stream. Look at this, see how, what a world of a difference it makes. You cannot make sense of any of this information. You have no idea what it's saying. Now remember what our telnet looked like, right? We were able to see everything. And again, this is what SSH looks like. So that is a good way to compare and contrast what the two look like. Just remember that telnet is no, needed to be known. You need to know what telnet is for your CCNA exam and you need to be able to compare and contrast them. But this way you're able to visually see why we don't use Telnet anymore. It's, it's just all plain text. Even if you encrypt those passwords, it just it's vulnerable, okay? Uh, opposed to SSH here where you can see how encrypted it is and it's just one big garbled mess and it's a lot more difficult to crack SSH encryption than it is to Wireshark and spoof the uh, communication going through with Telnet. All right, guys, so I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Please subscribe and like this video, and I will see you guys later.